name is Landry Phillips. I am the owner here at Regal Lounge Men's Barber and Spa. So I always wanted to have an opportunity to own my own business. My mother was a cosmetologist. And when I had the idea to start a business, a barbershop just seemed like a perfect fit because it was a place I already loved to be. So before I was working for the state of South Carolina in government, uh, accounting and finance. Um, so getting started in the barber industry obviously was a significant shift. Um, but fortunately, uh, a lot of the information was available online in order to figure out what I needed to do to get the appropriate licenses to start. Um, we've been blessed uh, to have great team members and partners along the way. A lot of other barber instructors, cosmetologists instructors who were able to help me fill in the gaps where I maybe didn't have um, as much experience myself. So the idea was uh, there wasn't really a space for men to get services like a manicure, a pedicure, or a facial in the environment that was really marketed to that demographic. Um, so we do a combination of services. You can get a full grooming uh, package where you get your hair cut, you get a massage, you get you know the manicure, pedicure, the whole shebang all in one location without having to go somewhere else. Um, you know, we'll treat you to a drink, you know, even put you in a robe and slippers if you would like. Obviously, you know, no one could have predicted COVID was about to happen, uh, myself included. Um, so I, we immediately were set up, ready to go, open up shop, and then the entire world shuts down. Um, so we were literally opening up and then having to shut down for two months. And then obviously right after that, we opened up in roughly June, July of 2020 when things were coming back online. But there's no way to give a, uh, a social distance haircut. <laughs> so uh, obviously business was very slow to build because not only were we a close contact business, but we were brand new. So, you know, trying to get our name out there, you know, printed, presented its challenges as well. A lot of hard work and persistence and then also a lot of help that we received along the way. Um, so we received help from the Small Business Development Center working with us to like receive a loan from the city of Columbia, working with the state. We received a grant during that time, you know, really working diligently to apply for all the federal resources that were coming out during the time. So like the economic injury, disaster loan assistance, PPP, things of that nature. Um, really helped sustain us. Um, if it wasn't for those resources, if it wasn't for people being willing to help us during that time, we probably wouldn't have made it through, but we knew that this was a dream and a passion. So we weren't willing to just give up and throw in the towel. You know, if we were gonna go down, we were gonna go down kicking and screaming, but thankfully that didn't come to pass. Um, and we're still here and we're still working towards the dream. Um, yeah, I would say humility was a big lesson. Um, being willing to ask for help, uh, you know, admitting that you don't have all the answers and looking to those around you to provide you assistance. Um, you know, you're doing this interview here with me today, but I know it's because of so many others that have given support to me that I'm able to, you know, speak to you guys today. So, you know, being willing to ask for help, I think is huge for any entrepreneur. really just doing a lot of research. Um, if you're going to invest the time, the money, the energy into building a small business, um, obviously you want to know what you're doing along the way. So uh, taking that time to study um, and understand your industry, understand the different elements of your business that are going to, you know, ultimately help you build that success. And then a part of it's trial and error. You try new things, some things work, and obviously you, re you repeat what works and let go of those things that don't. Obviously, at the time when we were starting, business was slow. We were looking for ways to pivot, shift, um, you know, capitalize on um, the space that we had. So my partner suggested that we start hosting, you know, small gatherings or private events. Um, originally, we never intended to use this space in that way. Uh, but as we put it out there, you know, we first hosted a birthday party. One birthday party turned into a Sweet 16, turned into a bridal shower, turned into a groomsman party. And so we've been hosting events here 
ever since. So, you know, after we're done, you know, doing all the haircuts and things for the day, oftentimes on the weekends, we'll have people come in who rent out our space uh, for whatever special small gathering that they might be having. I mean, I think everybody loves a good massage. Um, <laughs> So uh, a lot of times, you know, we have uh, members here who come in and they exclusively come just for the massages. Um, we have other people who at the end of the day, um, things that you wouldn't necessarily expect, but people who might have mobility issues um, and they're not able to easily bend over and maybe, you know, groom their feet that the way that they need it. So they actually use us as a resource to come in and say, hey, I can't really do this for myself. And so they're able to get that service here. I mean, I think a big piece of it is keep going. Um, there's a lot of times when you're gonna feel like you wanna give up because the reality is being an entrepreneur, starting a business is hard. It's a lot of risk involved with it. Um, but if you're going to reap the rewards for that, you know, after you sow the seeds, there's a whole lot of work that comes after that in terms of you know, taking care of that seed until it matures into something beautiful. So, you know, I, I, I said persistence before, but yeah, that, that continual hard work. And then, like I said, just being able to grow and shift, understanding that there will be new opportunities, you will make mistakes, uh, but it's important that you just keep going. Finding, I think, a great location, I think is a huge part of any type of brick and mortar business that you might start in terms of like, things that are gonna help define your success. Um, we spent actually several months uh, prior to, you know, ever signing a lease or finding the right location, uh, searching for locations online, going to visit places and do walkthroughs um, until we found what we thought would honestly suit us best, what ultimately led us, you know, right here into the heart of downtown South Carolina. Uh, when we originally started looking for a location, this space actually wasn't available, but it came about literally maybe uh, a couple months into our search where it became available and it was literally put on the market um, and at about a, two weeks time uh, we were signing the lease for the place because it wasn't just ourselves that we were interested you know we were competing with others for the space um, and then I think that's where kind of preparation came into play uh, where we had a you know fully written out business plan um, the owner of the building at the time saw our vision for what we were trying to do and it was presented better than some of the other potential candidates, which ultimately led us to being able to win the lease agreement uh, for this location. The most rewarding experience is being able to see your vision come to life. So being here on the weekends when we're busiest, walking in on a Friday and you see, you know, we have multiple client chairs are filled. As you walk around the building, you see individuals shooting a game of pool. Um, you see men in the back being able to get a manicure and pedicure, and you see people are happy. And that, that was what I had a vision for. It's like, I wanted to bring um, individuals a space to relax and just experience like that joy in their grooming um, in an environment that I can say, you know, I helped to build. Like you never know who you're gonna meet at the barbershop. So we come across individuals from all walks of life, everything from gentlemen in the construction industry, um, you know, to business professionals, lawyers, uh, people in the public sector, you know, working in government, you know, we've come across a, a number of political figures um, and being able to engage with all those people and having those, also those resources available to you as well, where you build connections and relationships and you know you never know who's going to potentially be able to assist you um you know all you have to do is you know oftentimes ask you know, we've tried to partner with the community we're right across the street from the Austin Wilkes house uh, which is a rehabilitation program for gentlemen transitioning um, out of incarceration and back into you know their normal everyday lives where we offer them discounted services where those men are able to come in, get their grooming done potentially before interviews and things like that. I think small businesses are, you know, the bloodline of, you know, America. Um, they're the bloodline of our economy, you know, in terms of like what keeps the heart of America going is small businesses. 
Uh, being a small business owner means uh, being willing to work hard, um, being willing to put others before yourself, um, being able to accept both the hardship that comes along with the success and know that ultimately what you're doing is a passion. I don't think that there's anything that makes me uniquely more qualified than anybody else to start or run a small business. Uh, I think the thing that's going to ultimately help anyone lead to success is kind of like that passion and drive to want to do something um, that you're going to put your all into because it's, it's hard work. But if you're willing to put forward the work, it can also come with, you know, an abundance of joy and happiness that you may not get that level of fulfillment almost anywhere else in your life.